Hello everybody. In this video, we'll present the options for reinforced concrete beam design and detailing with Strap 2018. For this example, we'll use the model on the screen. After performing analysis, we can go to Concrete Post Processor for design based on the analysis results. There are four element types for design in concrete post-processor. Beams, columns, walls, and slabs. We will select beams. Now, we must set the default parameters for beam design. In the General tab, the user must set the height axis of the model. The program will use this definition to identify beams perpendicular to the height axis and columns parallel to the height axis. The user must also classify the load cases for deflection calculation and earthquake design if needed. The reinforcement tab will allow the user to set the concrete type, the type of the main reinforcement, the gross cover, and which support moment to use. The shear torsion tab will allow the user to set the type of link reinforcement, if to consider torsion design, to conduct shear reduction, and define shear reinforcement parameters. The seismic tab will allow the user to set the ductility class for the beam design. The default parameters can be saved by clicking File, Setup, Save Defaults. Next, we will define the beams. The definition will allow the program to determine the beam spans and supports. If automatic definition is selected, the program will search all beam elements that are perpendicular to the height axis and will define the beams automatically. In most cases, the automatic definition will match the user requirements, but it must be reviewed and revised if necessary. Now let's click automatic definition and review the program's beam definition. Let's display the beams and supports that the program defined. Let's zoom on beam number 2. We can see two spans for beam number 2. The support width is displayed by the small yellow lines and the width measurement is 800 millimeters for the left support, 800 millimeters for the middle support, and 800 millimeters for the right support. The 200 millimeters support width is the left support of beam 13. As mentioned, the automatic definition can be revised manually by the user. Let's take beam number 3 as an example. We can see five spans along a line and the sixth span is offset. The reason for this definition is that the fifth span and the sixth span share the same column. We will revise this definition. Go to define, delete beams to delete the program's definition. By the way, the maximum number of beam members in a defined beam is 80. This is why we see beam number 4 along the line of beam number 3. After 80 members of beam number 3, the program defined beam number 4. So, to delete the beams, we only need to select one member of the beam.
Now we'll select to define a beam by selecting the first and last member. Select the first member and the last member. We can see the manual definition of beam number 3. At the beam definition window, there are two checkboxes that are unchecked by default. Ignore perpendicular beams as supports and ignore columns above as supports. To better understand these options, let's take a look at beam number 10. Go to Define, Display Revise Beam. We can see that beam number 10 starts at node number 2569 and beam member 231. The first span equals 1.9 meters, the second span 1.75 meters, and the third span equals 2.15 meters. Since we haven't checked the box for ignore perpendicular beams as supports, the program identified all perpendicular beams as supports. This definition can also be revised manually. Select the support and click Delete Support. We can see now a 4.1 meters span. Unchecking the box do not display nodes that are not supports will display all of the beam nodes and members. Any node can be selected and define or revise as support. The user may also revise the property of beam members. We'll select all of the first span beam members and assign a different beam property. We can see that we assigned property number 13. The mouse wheel can be used for zoom and panning. In the definition window, the user may also rename the beams. By default, the program will assign the letter B as a parafix and the concrete beam number. After setting the default parameters and beam definition, we can now compute our beams. Beams results summary table will pop up. Let's focus on beam number 2. We can see the beam number the first span starts at member 16 and we can see the minimum and maximum moments of the span at the left support, at span, and at the right support. Next we'll find the calculated reinforcement at the left support, at the span, and at the right support. The next span begins with member number 30. We can see all the relevant results and at the end we can find the shear reinforcement and the deflection results. The beam result summary can be displayed by span as we just saw or by member. When displaying by member we will see the moment and reinforcement results for each member. There are two options to display detailed results. Right click on a beam and select display detailed results or go to results, display detailed results and select one of the beam members. Let's display the detailed results for beam number two. On top we can see the beam spans and section, the moment envelope and the shear envelope. 
the results of top and bottom reinforcement, shear results, and the deflection results of each span. After reviewing the results, we can now transfer the computed beams to BMD software for detailing. Go to Results, and two options are available. Create BMD detailing files will send all the beams at once. Detail a selected beam will send only selected beams. For this example, we'll select Create BMD detailing files. As a default, Strap will create a folder named BM and the model number inside the working directory. The user may click Browse and create the beam detailing files in any directory. We'll select to detail the beams and uncheck Draw Perpendicular Beams. A window with detailing parameters pops up. These parameters are assigned to all the beams. We'll just uncheck the option Extend Steel Beyond the Support. The program will transfer the beams and create detailing files for each beam. We can see the folder at which the beams were created. Now, we'll present the option to draw beam detailing in concrete post-processor. This option was first introduced in Strap 2018. Select Draw and New Drawing. We'll change the layout size to A0. Click Add and we can see all the available objects. Slab, Column, Wall, Beam Detailing and Foundations Plan will focus on beam detailing. But before we add our beams, we'll add the slab drawing without the slab reinforcement. By selecting Edit and Parameters, we can now edit the display parameters. We will add the display of the slab thickness, beam names, and beam dimensions. Now we are ready to add the beam detailing. When selecting beam detailing, three options are available. Display the entire beam display bars and link data only or display bars only. We'll select to display the entire beam. Select any member of beam number 2 and place the drawing on the layout. Now let's go back to the layout and add beam number 7 drawing, but this time we'll display bars only. For beam number 24, we'll add the bars but in a 90 degrees angle. After adding the beams detailing, the user may also edit them. Let's add beam number 4 detailing and edit it.
click Edit and select Beam Number 4 Detailing. The Parameters button will allow the user to edit the scale, the angle, and the display options. Edit Detailing will allow the user to edit the detailing in BeamD software. Let's edit the bars on the beam's right support. Selecting Shape will allow the user to edit the bar shape. After editing in BeamD, go to File, Exit and Save. We go back to Strap and click Redraw. We'll now add Beam number 3. Click Edit, Edit Detailing, and we'll create a section. Go back to Strap and redraw. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.